this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is the Streamblify mic with tripod. This is an RGB microphone with its own little tripod, shock mount, built on pop filter, and the ability to mount it on a boom arm as well that you can see here. And it's an interesting device with a number of interesting highlights, including two different playback modes and some really good capture quality. It's also comparable, interestingly, to the HyperX Quadcast S, thanks to that RGB lighting, but also those features, because that mic also has a shock mount, for example, built-in pop filter, RGB, and more. But the Streamplify mic might be a little bit more interesting thanks to these dual playback modes which can go some way to eliminating background noise and making you sound a little bit clearer. In this video I'm going to be unboxing and setting the microphone up and showing you the various highlights and talking about the things of interest. I'm also using the mic right now for the voiceover so you can get an idea of the capture quality and I'm going to show you the difference between it being mounted on a boom arm and on the tripod later on because as you can see it has the little mini tripod included and all the various things. There's actually two cables as well, one that's USB-C to USB-C and one that's USB-A to USB-C. The mic has the USB-C connection on it, obviously, and you'll see some other highlights. Now, normally you get a mic on a desk stand, you want to get it off there as soon as you can and onto a boom arm and that'll still be the case here but it's nice that it comes with as you can see a very tall tripod when you compare it with the quadcast s for example so you can adjust this in terms of the height and then also you have the tilt on it which is adjustable through the little attachment on the rear this means that you can theoretically position it nicely on your desk and get it pointing in the right direction as cardioid pickup pattern so basically talking into the front of it where the dials are in order to get the best quality and that's the same reason you have the little pop filter which you can see just slots onto the bottom and then when you've screwed on the shock mount that'll hold that all in place and the shock mount obviously comes off and you'll see this in a second and that's the mounting for putting it on the boom arm or on the tripod so you basically have that set up there rather than that being connected directly to the microphone so you've got potential for removing some of the noise from knocks and bumps on your desk or on the boom arm and that should then lead to a better sound. This is good because usually you'd have to pay extra for a pop filter or a shock mount for the most part with most microphones and in my experience you have to pay extra for these things so nice additions to the setup that you wouldn't normally get. You also wouldn't get a tripod that's also quite tall either which is pretty nifty. Usually standard stands pretty low on the desk isn't great for sound so it's nice to see these features included obviously with the quadcast that you saw that does come there and i think that's worth comparing so i'm going to do a versus video to talk about the differences between them and show the difference in capture quality but there are some things that make this mic really good for what it is and it's well thought out also has some good specs on it that include up to 48 kilohertz 16 bit sample rate for capturing quality and as i said it's got two different modes in it which i'll show you later on but essentially there's a couple of buttons on the front you can see the large dial for adjusting the gain so you turn that up and down and it adjusts how much of the audio the microphone is capturing the higher you put it the more danger you have picking up background audio but we'll more on that in a little while and you've got the 3.5 mil jack and obviously also a button to switch between the RGB lighting, but there's more hidden in there, which isn't immediately obvious. So it has these two playback modes, and essentially you can access those by using the volume button. Now, first of all, you can press that volume button in and it will mute, and you'll notice the little LED just above the 3.5 mil connection goes red when it's muted. You can also press and hold this button to switch between the two modes, and the color of the RGB ring will change to let you know that you've done that. So you can put it into full podcast mode by pressing and holding it, which is where it captures all audio, and then press and hold it again, and the ring will turn green, and it'll put it into playback mode, one-way playback mode, which is interesting, and that basically gives you a tighter capture quality, but it also takes away the side tone, which is curious, and I'll talk a bit more about that as we get to it. But you can also press the little light button, so you can see this volume button. Below that is a little button, that will basically change the RGB lighting ring. So you can change the RGB that's displayed on there. And then you will be able to show that off on stream potentially. So it's a nice little highlight. Obviously it's a ring that goes all the way around it. So even if it's facing you, the back of it will still be facing the camera potentially, depending on how you've got it set up. And therefore you've got some nice accent of RGB, whether you like it or not. 
And then obviously that also is dual purpose because it shows you the different modes. You can see that you can abuse the mic a fair amount here and I'll show a bit more of that in a minute when I'm actually using it. But it's clear that it has a good solid shock mounting system. Now I did think when I first got it out of the box it feels a bit cheaper. It doesn't feel as premium quality as the HyperX Quadcast S. I feel like the mic quality isn't quite as fancy. However, that's not to say it isn't a good quality, and as you can hear from the audio of the capture, it's really rich, so it's impressive in that way. It does deliver a good sound. Also, the fact that you can basically have these two different modes for a superior sound pickup is really interesting because you've got one button press essentially to make things a bit more interesting. Now, as I said, a 3.5 mil means you can plug your headphones into that. So you can then get direct audio pass through from the microphone. And this obviously includes everything that's coming from the PC. So your game audio, for example, if you're gaming, can hear that through the mic and then you can adjust the volume. And also you've got side tone, so you plug that in and you can hear your own voice through it. Only in one mode though, so if you have it in the one playback gaming mode, you can't hear yourself anymore, which is weird. And I'll talk a bit more about that when I switch between those two modes and show them in a minute. But here you can see the process for attaching it to a boom arm. So this is our Rode PSA 1 Plus, and as standard straight out of the box, I'll just screw in there with the little attachment on the back. And then it's adjustable, so obviously you can adjust it on your boom arm, but you also have the ability to adjust the mic on its own stand. And then you need to get it into a position where it's front facing you, so you can talk into the front of it, and that'll give you the best quality. Also, get it close to your mouth where possible here, and then you get the best quality. It also means that you can turn the gain down to eliminate a lot of that background noise and make it sound really rich. So now I'm going to show you the differences between those and here i am with how i've been the whole time with the microphone connected and obviously on a boom arm so you can see psa one plus here and you'll see just how close i've got it so i've got about a fist's length from my mouth and that's the quality that you get when you do this and actually i don't have it potentially in the best sound mode because I wanted to demonstrate some things. So this is currently in that podcast mode that I was talking about. And a few things of note there. So essentially this allows it to capture more sound, which can potentially lead into some background pickups. So there is some potential fan noise. There's interesting highlights to this. Now I've done some videos previously on how to sort of optimize the sound of your microphone. And one of them is to adjust the gain level. So turn the gain level down. So turn that volume down on the wheel. And you can do this and adjust and work out what sort of level you need to get it at by opening something like OBS or Audacity and watching the level meters and sort of how they move around when you're using it. And essentially, you want to basically minimize it so that those levels don't appear when you're not using the microphone, so when you're not talking. And one of the things I've noticed is that on a higher volume, this microphone does do that. And so there is some pickup. If I'm dead quiet, you might hear it. is very minimal. Um, but one of the things that's interesting is if you switch into the other mode, like this. So now we're in the secondary mode, and I suddenly can't hear myself, which is quite curious. But this is the one-way game mode. So there's now no side tone, so I can't hear myself talking into the microphone. So you might think it's not working, but I can see that it's recording in the software, so it's actually capturing the audio. But what this does, is it seems to activate a hardware level noise cancellation. Like there's some hardware settings in there that's now actively cancelling noise in the surrounding environment. But uh, you will notice some compression because of it, so the sound's not quite as good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start typing. So G915 TKL keyboard on my desk within reasonable proximity. And I'm going to start typing on there in the background so that you can hear the difference between it and then I'm going to switch back, so I'm going to turn it back to the other mode. And now I'm on the other mode again, and I'm typing away on there and doing that. Now what you also might hear is obviously when I press the button, you can hear the sort of pickup of that noise. So it's not a really quiet button press, which is unfortunate. And obviously we're also going to be using this for muting. So I'm muting it. And you'll notice when I do do that, the RGB turns red. So it lets you know when it's muted. 
you get that both in the ring and on the little indicator on the front as well. So you know for sure it's muted and you won't have a problem, even if you're in the mode where you can't hear yourself. But you can hear some of the differences between that and sort of how it responds, the changes that that makes. It's a bit weird that when you put it in the mode that focuses it a bit more and eliminates some of that background noise, whether it's the fan noise, the keyboard noise, whatever else, that you then can't hear yourself. And I actually think this sort of one is nicer, is richer. So in the the other one, the podcast mode, it seems to pick up sound a bit nicer. It's a bit it's a bit uh, richer sounding. It doesn't compress your voice as much. But what works for you is going to vary depending on your environment. If you're in a particularly noisy environment, you might want to try the one-way gaming mode. And it's really cool to see that addition of having that hardware level of noise cancellation without having to worry about software or using something like NVIDIA Broadcast to eliminate some of that noise with AI on your graphics card. So now I have the microphone set up on the desk on its tripod stand. Now obviously I have to adjust the gain level and it's a lot further away from my mouth than I'd like. And it's also not in an optimum position because you can see for demonstration purposes I've got it near my keyboard and it's obviously in the way of my mouse just for the shot for the camera. But what I want to demonstrate is doing some typing in the background. So I'm going to type on the keyboard and you'll be able to hear some of what that can pick up. If I then put it into the other mode, which should eliminate some of that background noise, I'm talking still, but I can see that it isn't picking up the keyboard sound quite as much. However, I do think that this quality isn't as good. You can't hear me as clearly. Some of that sort of noise cancellation it's doing is actually knocking out some of my voice quite significantly, so not ideal. You can see the difference basically. This is a good temporary use for the mic stand, but I'd still recommend getting it on a boom arm. And if you pick it up and bring it a lot closer to you, it's obviously a lot richer, and then you can turn down the gain and still get really good quality sound out of it. So Hopefully you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the links in the description to find out more and to see all the specs of the microphone. And I want to give a big shout out to my YouTube members who help support the channel. If you're interested in seeing the benefits of being a member, hit that join button to find out more. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.